It seems like every year, for 11 months of the year, my mind conjures up the perfect deer. I mean, when I close my eyes, I can see the points. I can see how he lays out the pose that he's going to be standing in when I first see him and when I shoot him and what it's going to feel like when I'm holding him. And I can see all of it for that 11 months. And on the 12th month, I chase after it. And this is the story of my 2023 season, chase it after that buck that has been in my mind, in my dreams. When I close my eyes, I see him and hoping that he becomes a reality. So, Colton here tells me, well, I've got a really good spot for water up here on this. Okay, he says he's got water up here. So, he's like, it's in this draw right here. So, we walk all the way into this draw. Here's our water. Hey, in all fairness, this is way better than it was when I was here. <laughs> <laughs> what a great water year we're having. <laughs> Weather's about perfect. Super nice in here. Just snowing, perfect. We'll see. I got so much season ahead of me. I got a month and a half a season. It had to be a special buck for me to shoot it anyway. been a long season full of incredible adventure seeing awesome stuff and now we are down to the last couple of days of it that we can hunt but we are in the middle of the rut and things are really heating up and we have a lot of hope for what lies ahead of us the next couple of days 
All right, it's day two. Got some pretty decent rain last night. Killed a good deer, killed a masher elk. Now I'm looking for whatever the Lord has for me. Love these backcountry, tough conditions. Makes a man out of you. Beautiful stuff. The fog's set in, but it's kind of patchy, so I think it'll clear out. I'm gonna do a big loop today up into some other basins where I've seen big mule deer before. They seem to be rutting pretty good. Checking does. I think we'll turn up some bucks today. See if we find the one, huh? The deer have been working this stuff real good. Joshua shot his up in the fog up in there yesterday. Let's see if we can't turn up another big buck today. One thing that started becoming clear to me this hunting season as I pressed further and further into it was that I'm no longer hunting mule deer. The author C.S. Lewis once said, if we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. And those words were echoing in my mind throughout the hunt, especially the farther I got into it. If, if there wasn't a deer out there that met the criteria, if I couldn't find something that existed, maybe I wasn't chasing these deer at all, but I was chasing something distinctly and totally different. And it was really a recentering for me on the priorities in life. It's easy to get out of whack. It's easy to start chasing deer more than you're chasing God. It's easy to start hunting more than you're taking care of your family. It's easy to elevate things over the things that matter most. And in this moment, I started to really come back to that truth that the thing I was chasing wasn't deer, and it never has been all along. We're all just chasing after God. We want to be in His presence where there's fullness of joy, and that is what we're chasing. The deer, that's just dessert on top of everything good that God gives us. I'm using the best of my fire-making skills, but we've gotten four inches of rain in the last two days. i got to dry out my stuff. This is the best spot i found yet for firewood. And it's pretty, pretty nasty. Ah, low ceiling, fog's coming in and out, but good fur timber on this side. I think we're gonna get in and you can see some openings up in there. Going a little down through there, there's deer here. It's looking good. I pushed up another 1500 feet and got up onto this knob and glassed into the back in the snow and when I pulled up my binos I saw a buck that looked like he had root wads on the top of his head and by the time I got the spotting scope up there I could not find that same buck again and so I was scouring all over the place but just could never turn him up before the fog came in and I lost total visibility the rest of the day and never got to look up there again. <sighs> Snowing on my tripod, holding this thing up and the gun on the other side. I'm gonna cook myself some lunch. Wait for this to clear up a little bit so I can last more. Let's we'll see, this is a really good looking country. I've never hunted it before, but I've always wanted to. So, today's the day. That makes you think about something like you go through your whole life thinking you ought to do something wanting to do something maybe kind of halfway planning for it one day I'll do it someday I'll do it and we know a lot of those things that we talk about they'll be the greatest adventures of our lives and we're like man I want to do that one day one day I want to go hunt Alaska moose one day I want to hunt elk out west I want to horseback I want to fly I want to one day one day someday I want to do it I've always dreamed of 
But today I'm trying this spot. I've wanted to do it forever. Today is the day. And Jesus says, today is the day of your salvation. Today can be the day of your salvation. And there's this delineation between what has been up to this point, what you've always wanted and making that decision, bam. And all of a sudden everything's different. Now I'm in this spot. I've wanted, I've wanted to come here for like six years. Now I'm here. One decision, now I'm here. And Jesus, we've been running from him our whole lives. Every single one of us is born in rebellion against God running to everything but God, thinking in our heart we don't need him. But we do. And today can be the day. If you've been pursuing life and life abundantly, that's what Jesus offers. If you've been pursuing fullness of joy, that's found in God's presence. It's God you're chasing after. It's God you want. It's God that you've been going someday, one day. I hope to. I'd love to. I should. I ought to. I need to. Today is the day. Today's the day, my friends. Today's the day that you get right with Jesus. You need to repent. That means change direction. You were going one way, now you're running towards Jesus. You were running away, now you're running to him. You need to admit that you've sinned against him, change direction, and commit your life to him. It's very simple, but it's not easy. If you want to know practically, it's like I had big questions when I came to the Lord. And I sat there listening to everything I possibly could read in the Bible, wanting to answer all these questions. If you have questions, we wrote a resource called The First Mile. I want to send it to you absolutely free. Go over to our website. It's www.limitlesshunting.com. We'll get that in your hands. It'll teach you everything you need to know about who God is, why your relationship is broken with him, what you need to do to fix that, why you absolutely have to do it or the re repercussions of it. And then once you've committed your life to Jesus, how to practically and powerfully walk it out in a way that actually has impact and transformation and meaning for your life. So it's not just like this pie in the sky, oh, I go to church every Sunday. And, oh, you know, I'm a Christian and I watch football. And I'm American. No, it's more than that, man. This is a, this is a lifestyle, powerful, abundant, life-giving lifestyle that you can only dream of. And it starts now and it lasts through eternity. 10,000 years from now, still going to be loving it. Maybe you've dreamed of doing all these things today, someday, one day. I hope to, I want to. Today is the day, my friends. Go over there to our website. Make a choice. Make a step today in the right direction towards God. Today. I've been seeing lots of mule deer. No mashers yet. That's a lot of bucks I've passed up this year. I'm looking for just the right one. But nothing else will do. Gotta have the, the right one. One of the greatest byproducts of hunting in the backcountry for extended periods of time with no cell service is you just get some time to think. And on this trip, I had a lot of time to think about what was going to happen in the coming days. We're down to the last couple of days of season. My brother had gotten done packing out Casey's nice bull that he'd gotten, and he decided to join me and follow me around with the video camera. What he didn't know that had changed in the last couple of days is that I had decided I was not going to take a deer on this trip and that if we did turn up a really good deer, it was going to be Colton and not me that ended up getting a hold of the deer that we'd been chasing all season. I need a better look at him. I don't know. Good eyes, though. Real big three. Like, as far as threes go, with crab front forks, he's good. 
Oh, and he has brows. Short top forks. Maybe the 160 buck, probably. Yeah, I don't think we should shoot that. Okay. Unless you see another one. Unless you really want him, or go over there if you want to shoot him. That's a long ways over that for that way. buck. He's not a big he guy. might be 160. He's not. He's probably 150. the last morning of the hunt and our hope is limited but we decided to go and take a poke around anyway and it didn't take but a couple of minutes and we churned up one stud of a mule deer just across the way from us working his does i'm on him Missed him. Over his back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know where he went. Just hold on. This is a good demonstration of why it is so critical to have a rock solid rest when you're shooting, especially yeah, long range. range. Colton got a little excited and he was a little unstable and let that one fly before he was ready. And it resulted in a miss. But like I always say, it doesn't matter what you've done. It matters right. what you do now. Got to learn from those mistakes, recalibrate, yeah. and hopefully you get another shot. Tell me when you're on him. I'm going to go to 8.25. Oh, he's a Huh? Here. Let me know when you're on him. I'm on him. Got him. Good. He's down. He's dead. He's dead. Hey. Nice shot. <laughs> you got too squirrely on the first one. Yeah, maybe. He did. But you got him. I dialed the 7.25 on that one. Yep. Oh, man. Oh. Awesome. I put it right on front of his shoulder yeah we sweet. better boogie scoot i know now we got a lot of work to do it is crazy Time. Does he? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a good back. <laughs> That's a good back, dude. Oh my goodness. That's your best year yet. Look at that. Wow. That's a good buck. You happy with that thing? Oh yeah, extremely. Oh my. At the end of the year, I was forced to answer this question and I'll pose it to you. If the thing that I'm looking for can't be found in the mountains, no matter how hard I pursue it, 
then what I'm looking for isn't in the mountains, so why am I looking for it there? And I would ask you the same question. If you've hunted your whole life, and no matter how many deer you kill, how many elk you kill, how many experiences you have, you're always left wanting more. It's because it can't be found here. What you're looking for isn't here. It's not in the mountains. It's not in the woods. It's not in the deer. What you're really looking for is Jesus. And he has the adventure of a lifetime for you. Still tons of water. Getting real close now though. <laughs> I don't think they're laughing as much as you. Why aren't you guys laughing more? Lifetime memories, come on. This one's not good. We did it. I cannot believe it. This is Casey's first whitewater trip ever. What do you think, Casey? There were some, definitely some times there where I thought we'd be losing some stuff. Everything's in, right? Like, yeah, I think so. Where's that was wild. Where's the other gun, Colton? What other gun? <laughs> the 300. Oh, I lost that. Yeah. What do you think of that, Tim? I'll, be, uh, I'll take care of it. Okay, so Tim is like our assistant pilot. And this is like the most awesome man I know right here. Seriously, become one of my best friends in the world. And chief. second in command chief pilot for Limitless Outdoors. Oh, there you go, Something yeah. Like and he is available for the right woman. I just, I need to say that. How old are you, Tim? You 45? Just turned 46. 46. I've so. aged well. What's the age range? 35 to 40. 35 to 40. Keep me young. He's a stud. And this awesome. is the biggest <laughs> rack I think I've ever held. Yeah, he's an awesome man of God, too. So, man, you look good. I just want to take a second and thank you for watching and we truly hope that you enjoyed this hunt as much as we enjoyed putting it together. Make sure to catch up with us next week as we go on an unforgettable hunt in some of the harshest weather we've ever experienced in Colorado. Until then, remember, it doesn't matter what you've done, it only matters what you do now. God bless you all. We'll see you next week.